quiet on the set over there. <laughs>
and then afterwards, people walk right across the street to the Voyager for what we call the after splash bash, kind of a tongue twister. I like it, I like yeah, it. Yeah, and really it's a place for people to warm up, celebrate, get excited about the uh, money that was fundraised, and really just celebrate an awesome event. And so right now, I think we have raised about $10,000 so wow. far. Our goal is the same as last year's, which was about 28,000. Mm -hmm. So we have a ways to go, but um, we're excited to see if we can hit that again as well as the same amount of plungers, which last year we had 120. Wow. So we have our fingers crossed we can get there again. And for those people who are, as we say, too chicken to plunge, uh, you can still come out, support, put donations in, uh, donate to people who you want to see jump in the water, all those great things. And the whole event is such a great time. So whether you're plunging or not, we encourage you to come out. Um, and if you do want to plunge and you aren't signed up to plunge yet, you can go to plungemi.com okay. and you'll see a whole list of the 28 plunges throughout the state. And you can click on St. Clair or if you can't make St. Clair, pick whichever one you can go to. I and would be more concerned about one in Key West, maybe. Yeah, you know, that would be <laughs> ideal. Special Olympics, Florida. Right. Yeah, but, um, you know, those plunges, I'm sure, are a little warmer, a little less right. uh, endurance needed for that. but. You can go on that website, go to St. Clair. You can donate to people who are already plunging or create your own team. And there is a minimum donation suggested of $75 to plunge. And that gets you our awesome t-shirts for the event. Um, and of course, we were looking at this earlier. We have our incentive items. Right. If you do raise more than $75. So if you raise $200, you get an awesome beach towel. If you do 500, it's a sweatshirt. Uh, you get that. Oh, you backpack. get those as prizes. Yeah. So, okay. um, if you raise 750, you get a backpack. A thousand would be that pullover and the jacket for 1500. So, we have awesome incentives for you to raise money and fundraise for our organization. Okay. Uh, you brought along a little video, and mm -hmm. if the ladies will throw that up on the screen yeah. here, we'll talk over the top of it. Mm -hmm. But. This was last year's uh, St. Clair. Look at that. Look at the crowd. That's what I'm I amazing. know. And St. Clair always brings a great crowd, which is so exciting. And it, it's the uh, it is the St. Clair Harbor. And yes. look at the ice there. Oh my gosh! It was and, cold last year. And the fire department is there, and the uh, Tri Hospital EMS. And the, oh, oh, that's wet. That's cold. Yeah. And you see the dive team there too. That's always fun too, because people enjoy talking to the dive team and interacting with them. And their job is pretty interesting to a lot of people. Right. So, what a gorgeous day! The sun, there's not a cloud in the sky, but it was pretty cold. It Were was you here? Cold. I wasn't at St. Clair last year, but oh my gosh, that girl has a tank top on. It's too <laughs> shiver just thinking about it. But yeah, the sun's out, and that's always the best kind of weather. If it's not windy, sun's out. Although there's ice, it's, you know. I got a kick when I looked earlier. These two girls are going to be stopped now by a reporter yep. from the Times Herald. <laughs> and they're probably saying, can we go inside? Yeah. Can we go inside? <laughs> oh, but look at the crowds. Yes. That's what's really nice and really wonderful. Yeah. So it is a it is a spectator sport. It is. Like we say, if you're too chicken, you can still come out, be one of these people who support. And it's it's entertaining. So you yeah. don't have to worry about that. These girls, you can see. They still say it's cold. cold. Yeah, the water warriors with their jerseys on. So awesome. it's a it's more than just a family fun event. It's a public event. It's yes. a it's a humanitarian event. Very much. So. Um, yeah, we'll watch here for another second or two. The uh, these two are going to jump in together. Mm -hmm. Going to take hands and go. Okay, here we go. <laughs> here they go. One, oh. two. Oh, that's just too cold for me. You can see everyone who comes up, their mouths are wide open, getting that breath of air because it almost right. takes your breath away. How cold it is. <laughs> It's very entertaining. And a lot of people, too, wear costumes and get excited and do fun stuff with it. Those people have some yeah, water warriors. Yeah, you go through, yeah, go, keep going through those, that, those slides. It, I think there's a costume in here. So look at those. Yeah, those two guys. <laughs> I love that. So it's a real fun event. And you had 100 and some participants last year. Yeah, not there's including the, all those people there that stand by and, and watch. Well, the uh, water warriors, yeah, it's mm -hmm. just, a, just a fun event. Mm -hmm. Uh, also, we've got uh, you've got your Facebook uh, page, mm -hmm. and uh, it's an easy one: Facebook.com/slash St. Clair Polar Plunge. Okay. Here it is, right here. Yeah. And you can go on there and get more information, and you can register when you hit to the sign up. Hit yeah. the sign up there, uh, Lexi. Great, thank you. And it'll take you right to the registration yeah. page. And it says 22,000 raised. Was that last year? Oh, yep, that's last that's year. That's 2017. So that was what you got to surpass. Yeah. And uh, 
it also lists some of the people that were participating and how much money they had. So and that money on there too doesn't include the day of the event donations we got. So in total, we ended up getting over twenty-eight thousand, which was awesome. And there's on the bottom right also is the, all the other ones around the state of Michigan. So yeah. there's tons, tons of them available. Oh yeah. So right down at the bottom, pick, click on St. Clair and see what happens. Mm -hmm. Right, the, uh, St. Clair. See it there? There you go. Look. That should take you to this year's. Yeah, yeah there we go. Yeah, fifty-seven hundred dollars so far. So. Uh, uh, that's great. It's easy. It's yeah. it's fun. We thank you for telling us about it. Of course. It's the uh, February the 18th, mm -hmm. and uh, you did a good job. Thank you. Thanks what for having me. What are you graduating me. in? I graduate. Wh wait. What do you mean? In college. I'm graduating with my bachelor's of applied arts in public relations. I graduate. Well, in I May. think you'll do well. Thank you. I appreciate <laughs> it. <laughs> uh, we'll be back with our next guest in just a second. We're back with the managing director and education director of the Riverbank Theater, but he's dressed as an elephant. Hi, Paul. Aaron Dennis Smith, welcome. And you're playing the role of Horton. That's me. The elephant. Horton the elephant. <laughs> yeah. I thought it'd be fun if I came in costume. I was. So. I'm glad you came there in you costume. Go. What? Uh, this is kind of my costume. You'll, if you come see the show, you'll see the rest of it. The but. show is Susical the Musical. I like that part right mm -hmm. there, and it runs from February 16th through March the 18th. A That's nice correct. long run. Yes, five weekends. You've extended it this year. Yes, as we found that by doing three weekends, by the third weekend we were sold out, and right. then we were closed. Yeah. So people wanted to come, and there weren't any performances right. left. So. Talk to me about Susical the Musical. Yeah, it's a mouthful, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it really Susical is. The uh, it's, a, it's a great old play, a musical. Yeah, I, would, I wouldn't say it's necessarily old. It's, it's modern in right. feel. It's kind, of a, it's kind of a rock musical, if you will. Okay. It's got a lot of fun tunes in it. It is mostly sung. There's a, there are, we say, lines and everything, but everything is kind of set to music, and it's, uh, it's a great, great Colorful feast for the eyes, I, I like to call How it. How big is the cast? Uh, I think we have 28 in this cast. That's pretty good size. Yep, we have about 11 children, and the rest are... Oh, they'll steal the show. Yeah, that's the idea. Yeah, the whole thing, That's right? the idea. Yeah, they're very talented. We're very And you fortunate. elephants would just be sort of standing around the room. I just kind of get pushed around. I, I, I kind of get uh, bullied around a little bit around the stage. and um, The story basically follows the story of Horton Hears a Who, from Dr. Seuss lore, and in the show, the cat in the hat, everyone knows who the cat in the hat is, kind of sets the, all the action in motion. There's a little boy named Jojo, and it kind of centers around him, and the cat gets Jojo into trouble because he lets him think all these wonderful things, and all this cool, crazy stuff comes to life in his bedroom, and he gets in trouble, and it's a lot of fun. Oh, yeah? It's a lot of fun. Very colorful. Not just for children, I may add. Okay. Um, it, you know, there are children in it, but children of all ages will enjoy this, this story, as young as three, four years old, all the way to 104 years old. Where is the performance? It's, it's at not, Riverbank Theater. It is at the Riverbank. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, we need the bigger space for this one. So. It's good. Yeah, it's yeah. Good. Uh, you are, you, before we started, we were, you and I were talking that you have a new title, and that is Managing Director of the Riverbank Theater and the Academy, yes. the education part of it. Yes. Congratulations on that. Thank you. What does that mean? That means I kind of oversee what's going on with the theater, dates and scheduling and, and procedures and that kind of thing, as well as teaching the classes that we offer with Riverbank Performing Arts Academy. When so, are classes beginning? Well, we've already had our winter session start. We started about three or four weeks ago, okay. and we are it's booming. It's fantastic. Lots of eager young thespians coming in wanting to learn about the art of theater. We have classes coming up this spring um, for training. A lot of our classes this year are more education-based rather than performance-based. Oh, okay. Um, we, we're trying to train young actors rather than just throw them on stage and hope that they can figure it out. You know, we're talking about training the voice, training the dance, training the acting, and so that they have some skills to apply mm -hmm. to the talent that they've already got. So that's kind of what we're doing. But then our summer camp program is coming in July and August, and that is where we will be doing larger productions. Does so. the public get to come and see them? At sure. The there? Yes. Now, there's this winter class is just completing. Are they going to do a performance? They are not going to do a performance. Okay. Some of the classes we will invite parents in, okay. like, like, like dance studios do, mm -hmm. to see like a, a, 
a parent night or mm -hmm. whatever mm -hmm. you have, what you will. But uh, yeah, a lot of our classes, we have a Sing Disney class going right now for young kids. And we're singing lots of cool Disney songs and teaching Must techniques. be fun to go to work every day. Oh, I love it. Yeah. It's a blast. It's a dream job, let me tell you. A lot of work. Yeah. yeah, but that's all right. <laughs> a lot of work, but it's a lot of fun. And then our junior high uh, class this this season right now is Broadway Voice, and I divided the girls and the boys apart, and it's grades five through eight, and they're learning the basics of singing. And sometimes when you put age five through eight, no uh, grades, grades, grades five, grades through, five, eight. five through eight, yeah, because they're kind of at that age where they can start really developing some good technique with their singing, and but it's it's hard to do that when you're a boy and there's girls in the room and yeah, there's yeah. girls and there's boys in the room and yeah. so we separated uh, separated them and it's going very very well we have about 20 kids enrolled in that so yeah and we have spring classes coming up so we've got check uh, us out we'll throw up your uh, your web page here it's a great web page and uh, uh, that includes everything on this web page the, yes the gift cards the uh, season mm -hmm. yeah come on down the, the bottom there and you've got a great lineup uh, this year it is uh, Suzical, Suz I can't say that one today. I know it's hard uh, the music, that thing there with the hat <laughs> and musical and then yeah. the other ones I can pronounce the uh, Thurley Minor Millie Escanaba and the Moonlight you just got a great lineup it is it's very balanced this year like there's a lot of comedy there's some some beautiful music there's some fun quirky music like Susical. what's the Dixie Blues Swim Club Dixie Swim Club is about five ladies that it takes place over a period of maybe 30 years or so and oh, they, okay. they meet at this beach house every year they were college uh, college classmates they were on the swim team together and they stayed friends over the years and so uh, it kind of takes place over a period of time so that's a fun play. Titanic the musical was, Titanic was on Broadway musical. wasn't it? It was it was I think 20 years ago actually okay and um, this version we're doing is focuses more on the the the, the Titanic itself you know the, oh. the, the the real people that were on it there won't be any Jack and Rose in our show from the movie it's okay. not the movie if people think that there's no Celine Dion or anything okay. like that. But it's absolutely beautiful, beautiful music. And we just had auditions and casting for that. And it's going to be a stellar really? production. Yes. Not to not to be missed. And is that Baker's? Baskerville. Baskerville. That's, that's a, a Sherlock Holmes mystery that's kind of based on the Sherlock Holmes stories. But it's a comedy. Okay. Oh. And I think it's three or four actors and they play all the parts. Oh, my God. So lots of fun. And, of course, the nerd is hysterical. There's a... It's a quirky so it's great. story it's a in the great 70s, lineup. yeah, yeah. And you'll be using both venues? Yes, I think we have five shows in the Riverbank this year and three down at the Snug. So, right. and not to mention there are, there are um, other guest artists coming in to do uh, other productions that are in our done, season. You've so. done wonderful things with uh, Marine City. February the 16th through March the 18th. Horton the Elephant will be at That's the front me. door letting you in. <laughs> or, or at least when the curtain opens. Oh, when the curtain opens. <laughs> I'll be there. <laughs> Aaron, always a pleasure to see you, Thanks, sir. Thanks, Paul. Our friend, uh, Deb Johnson, will be along in just a second to uh, talk to us about what's going on with St. Clair County Community Mental Health. Be right back. We are lucky to have a lady by the name of Deb Johnson in St. Clair County, and she's in charge of... St. Clair County Community Mental Health. She's returned to focus. Tell us about the great things that are happening up on Electric Avenue. Yes, thanks for having me, Paul. It's a and, pleasure. Uh, before we start that, though, I just want to congratulate you <laughs> one more time. I don't probably everybody's congratulating you, but I'm being the Community Leader of the Year. Oh, thank you, darling. I was going to call you Dr. Dingaman. No, no, no. You know, no, no, that no. was kind of an inside joke for people right. at the event, right? Right, <laughs> right. But, um, but no, seriously, that's a really high honor, and thank um, you. and you are very deserving. Thank and I was. You. Happy to be there to help celebrate well, tonight. It was great to see you there, and it was a wonderful evening for River District Hospital. It was. They raised a lot of money, and uh, they uh, awarded nice little plaques to a couple of us. And uh, that's perfect. A doctor and to me, and uh, so it was. It was one nice evening, and it's very humbling to to be honored. So to, to do when you're doing things that you love to do. So. I know it. It is, but it's still it's still nice to get recognized well, sometimes you. for what you do. Thank so you. I um, I um, congratulate thank you, for, you. Thank you for and that. I'm happy thank to be there. You. You're welcome. So um, what do you got going for us? Well, we. There's a lot of things in February, so um, I want to focus on a couple, but just to let you know some of the things, um, it's International Friendship Month. It's okay. Boost hi, friend. Hey, hi, friend. <laughs> um, it's Boost Your Self-Esteem Month, and having friends helps boost your self-esteem. Um, it's Cancer Prevention Month, uh, American Heart Month, 
Children's Dental Health, Dental Health Month. National Eating Disorder Week is in this month. Tomorrow, oh. That's all right. I guess I don't know when this airs. Um, right. But February 2nd is um, National Wear Red Day. Okay. Um, for heart health, and yeah. you know they, they yeah. focus on heart health throughout the month, um, and so um, and it's also on um, on uh, February twenty fifth. It's National Stand Up to Bullying Day. Okay. Um, and that's a Sunday. Oh, it must be the twenty third then. If the twenty fifth okay. is a Sunday, it's twenty third because I had two different dates here. I wasn't sure. Okay. Um, and National Random Acts of Kindness Day is on February seventeenth. So um, I kind of want to talk about the importance of friendship um, because okay. especially um, sometimes for the people that we serve, um, having and maintaining friends can sometimes be difficult. Mm -hmm. but, um, but, you know, the thing about having a lot of friends or having friends, it's not only good for your mental health, but it's good for your physical health. And one of the things that I think is interesting that, you know, I, we always have to do a little research before they, they send me on these shows right. um, to talk about it. But, um, you know, being around friends can it, um, increase um, certain things in your brain, yep. like serotonin, dopamine, um, endorphins, and oxytocin. And so, and they, they refer to those as the quartet of... Um, like happy chemicals or mm -hmm, whatever. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, just, just having friends helps those things in you. So that's, that, of course, helps your mental health. But things like um, for your physical health that it does is it can de decrease your blood pressure um, and uh, it can um, actually help reduce risk for heart disease, um, different things like that. So, um, so it's important to have friends. Friends and friends and friends and what they do. Oh, but what I want to say is, okay, so for some, for all of us, as we get older, um, we tend to maybe not spend as much time cultivating our friend friendships, either new friendships or maintaining our existing friendships, because you know we get busy with uh, raising children, mm -hmm. with our jobs, yeah, right. Maybe caring for older parents. Um, you know, life kind of sometimes gets in the way of that, but it's really important to take time to maintain your friendship and. And um, and they even try to make some new friends along the way, um, and so there's it's you know again just because it, it's good for your physical and your mental health. So well, people come, people go, they move away, uh, they change houses, that kind of stuff. Uh, as you said, they're 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 involved with their children, so you have to you have to work at it. You do. You have to work at it, and um, and so um, one of the things that we talk about is for the people that we serve. Sometimes it's harder for them to work at it because. Um, sometimes uh, social situations can be difficult Correct. for people, so that's where you meet friends. Like you know, when you go to um, events or mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. gatherings or whatever, or you invite a bunch of people to your house. Well, sometimes that's hard for individuals that um, we serve who might um, suffer from a mental illness. Um, and so, one of the things we try to do is give tips for other people. Like, so let's say you had, you had a friend who gets diagnosed with some mental illness, don't like bipolar disorder. Maybe you don't even know what that is. Right. So one of the things you could do for your friend is you could educate yourself about bipolar right, disorder. All right, I like that. So you, that you understand better kind of the ups mm -hmm. and downs of that um, and how you can support that person. Um, you still invite them to things, um, and maybe when they're kind of in the low of that, they might say no repeatedly. No, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. But don't give up. Don't don't quit asking um, if you're their friend, you know, and, and listen. Just listen sometimes. Um, Instead of trying to tell them what they should do or whatever, just maybe listen. Listening and, is so important. And be it's their friend. It's an art. It's an art. It is an art, and um, and it's it's hard. You know, we always, some you know, we're always thinking about what are we going to say before you even finish talking. Like if you were yeah. talking to me, I'm I'm thinking about what's my response going to be. Right. But really try to be present in the moment and um, listen to folks. So um, so those are just some of the the tips about friendship. Um, and uh, why that's so important. So it maybe in this month, try to make a new friend. Right, okay. Okay, and um, another thing is um, this month, it's International Stand Up um, for Bullying. And uh, we we at Mental Health don't have a specific campaign. We're gonna actually probably try to develop something. Um, San Lake County has, Community Mental Health has a nice, it's called Stop the Bull, um, it's, it's that Stop the Bullying. Mm -hmm. um, but um, we talked about um, you know, there's different types of abuse. There's verbal abuse. There's physical abuse, social, um, and then there's um, cyber, cyber bullying, um, and that seems to be obviously on the on the rise because of all the technology. Um, and uh, they're all they're all bad. They're all mean, um, and uh, and sometimes bullying can be take can be direct. Like I can say, you know, I can't stand you because you're. Uglier, right. you know, or you're whatever. You're so unpopular, or, 
or whatever. But um, or I can just tell everybody things about you that are probably not even true. But right. I say because don't hang around with Paul because <laughs> da 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 da. He's got funny looking glasses. Yeah, he's got funny glasses, and um, even though I have glasses too. Right. And um, <laughs> but anyways, but things like that, those are indirect, and all that stuff is so hurtful. Um, and especially, um, you know, sometimes kids say, "What can I do in school about that?" Um, kids, sometimes kids are afraid to tell on bullies because they're afraid they'll get bullied worse. Right. Um, we hope and try to encourage people to, to do say something, kids to say something, tell your parents, tell a counselor at school, a teacher, because teachers and counselors aren't going to go up to, if you're the bully, they're not going to go up and say, hey, Paul, come to my office because Deb Johnson just told us some stuff about you. Right. Come to their student. They're not going to do that. No. So um, they're going to be discreet. So you should try to, you know, tell and also don't give bullies an audience. Um, let bullies know it's not cool. Um, there's all kinds of things that you can do. And so we um, we hope to, you know, encourage and pass that message along to kids. Um, I know uh, Lindsay Chap um, from the yeah. Child Abuse Neglect Council. Um, right. She does a great, great job. Lady. She does that education piece in schools yeah. about stuff like that and standing up. So, so I just want to make mention of that. And so maybe kids uh, in schools can. If they don't already sign the anti-bullying pledge, they can ask their school administrators, is that something we could start at our school? Um, that would be a good thing it's to do. It's a tough do. time. Uh, middle school group was uh, really uh, the front line of that bullying world. Yeah, it is. It is. It seems like kids are, are pretty nice in elementary school and then middle school. The clock that switches. Yeah, something happens. Yeah. And um, yeah, But that is where you really got to try to get a handle on that and, and um, hopefully encourage uh, kindness and stuff, which brings us to... National Random Acts of <laughs> Kindness Day, <laughs> and um, I kind of like. They sort of go together with bullying and kindness. Yeah, or... yeah. Don't you know? So instead of being a bully, think of some random right. nice things you could do for right. people. Um, and actually, you'd be more popular and have more friends if you do stuff like that in the long run. Um, but you know, uh, some things you know that you could do is you know pay for the coffee for the or whatever for the person behind you. That, you know, that's happening more often as you as you go around the world. You hear about stories about people buying their. Somebody else's dinner or lunch, it's great. I know, I just had that happen to me at Four wonderful, Star. Wonderful. And um, somebody bought my, mine and my daughter's uh, breakfast, and I was like, oh, wow, that's nice. And then I said, who did that? And first they said, well, we're not supposed to tell you. But <laughs> then they told me it was, it was a friend of mine that was across the way. I um, mean, he had already left, and um, but yeah, he bought us our, our uh, lunch. That's nice. but, but that's nice. And um, just things. Um, totally other, unexpected. Totally unexpected. And um, uh, little things you can do that don't cost any money, yeah. like maybe let somebody go in front of you at the grocery yeah. store. If you're not in a big hurry, um, you know, do that or, uh, you know, just compliment a friend. And you know what? You'll feel better. You will feel better, especially sometimes you see like a stressed out. Maybe it's a parent with the child and the child's acting up and they're behind you. It's like, hey, why don't you go ahead of me? Because you know they're dying to get out of there. That's right. And, um, That's so right. it's like, you know. We've just, all been there. Yeah, yeah, we definitely have. And so um, things like that, you can just do easy things like send an encouraging text to a friend or, yeah. you know, things like that. So, you know, those are those are all good things to do. So um, other than that, we don't have any specific events in the month of February going on at Take Mental Take a little Health. breather. We're you taking guys, a little breather. You guys are always, always busy and always got something going on. We do, and we actually are gearing up for our annual meeting, which is the first in first Tuesday in May. Um, so our poster contest just ended, you know, the high school yep. poster contest. We have those displayed um, in our hallway at our Port Huron location. Mm -hmm. People want to come take a look because soon um, we'll release the, whatever, the link to do online voting. Um, for that, and uh, also we have the writing works of the middle school students are in, so we'll be looking at that, and um, and we'll be announcing winners in the near future. We'll bring them in. Yeah, and uh, we we should we should definitely bring them in. We've had a lot of, actually, just coincidentally, a lot of St. Clair kids have, um, yep. and Marine City have um, won in both either or both of those contests. Our last year top winner was uh, St. For poster was a high school student from uh, St. Clair. Good. You've yeah. been a busy lady. Yeah. Uh, we thank you for appearing and coming in and seeing us on a monthly basis because you have a lot of important stuff in the, and you, you, have, you serve such a wide variety of, of people, You thousands of people in the county. We do. We serve like approximately 4,000 people a year um, and it's, it is countywide. Um, we have offices in KPAC and Marine City um, and uh, then the biggest is Port Huron and then we also, I think I told you about when we, we opened up a new ABA center in Port Huron ABA is Applied Behavior Analysis for Kids with Autism, and that's in the Baker College Complex. It's, oh, okay. It's the furthest west building is our ABA center for little ones, um, like 18 months to six years of age. We do some center-based services for those kids and also home-based services. 
Um, so that so we're in that location as well. Important, but the main very important work. Yeah, so it is, um, and we're seeing a lot of successes with that program too. That's an evidence-based practice um, shown to definitely um, um, help kids and, and produce some really positive outcomes. So we're Great. excited about that program. Thanks, Deb. Always a pleasure. You're welcome. Always good seeing you. Thanks for having me. Uh, that's about it for this edition of the uh, Focus Program. Thanks very much for tuning in. Until next time, I'm Paul Dingman. See you soon. Thanks for watching Focus with Paul Dingaman. Focus is produced at the CTV Community Television Studios in St. Clair. For over 20 years, CTV has captured the moments that matter to our community.